the one room in Melly that you have seen us working in over and over and over and over and over is going to become three <laughs> different spaces. And we are about to take the next six weeks and transform that room. We have decided to undertake the rehabilitation of Melly kind of in a different way than we usually do. Usually we do all the electrical, all the plumbing, all the drywall, all, all, all. This one we're going to actually try to do kind of one room at a time so we can show you one, the, the process of finishing one full space at a time. But we're gonna concentrate on this room. We're gonna do our flooring, our walls, everything. We're doing everything. We're doing everything. everything. We're so going you're gonna to get give to see... you, in six weeks, we hope to give you a completely transformed bathroom from a gutted space where there's dirt floors and powder post beetles crawling around on the walls to a completely finished bathroom. Now that's the plan. We'll see how that goes. Best laid plans of mice <laughs> and men. We've made we'll plans see. before. Well, we're tall people. <laughs> That's perfect for me. I love it. I do too. Look how pretty it is. Yeah. I need to put a little mineral oil on it. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Master at work. <laughs> Master or mad woman, one or the other. Maybe both. So, start with a great collection of everything apothecary. Yes. And then make it make sense somehow. You know, and just like the one day we have left, I can do it. You can do it. It can be done. What's wrong? This box is insane. <laughs> okay, hey, no, that makes sense now. All right, I guess. it operates like a box. It's like a box. See if you can figure out what that is. And now a white box inside the box. Yeah, it's my favorite kind of gift. Boxes inside boxes. Well, looks like a fancy stopper. Look at that. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. You're getting very sleepy. Look, I don't need that. I'm already very sleepy. <laughs> getting the overall effect. Ooh. Seeing the whole bathroom. What is this crazy thing you have? What? How does it work? What is it for? What is it? This is, these are the kinds of things you hunt down when you're a purist. <sighs> oh, wow. Ta-da! I'm gonna have to take some links <laughs> out of the thingy thing, but. Yeah, of course there's no, there's, look, there's, there's, <laughs> well, no, yeah, we there's gotta, no drain yet. We gotta put that in. But you know. You know. That's what this is for. Yay. Our first hardware. Yay! Did you get why men don't read directions? No, so I didn't. Why don't men read Because them? they're terrible. So explain to the people what is going on with our directions. Well, first of all, you get all these parts, but you don't get any of them labeled. So you have to figure out what part is what. Right. They're labeled in the instructions, but they're not... Well, not really. I mean, there's this that has what is what, kind of. But they weren't labeled on the packaging, right? No. No. Do you feel like a dad on like Christmas, Christmas Eve trying to put the bicycle together? 
Yes, I wish Santa's helpers would come. Up. <laughs> I guess I should stop videoing so I can be Santa's helper, you can be huh? Santa's helper and help me. Okay, I'll be Santa's little helper. Well, these are our fantastic antique Tennessee pink marble sinks that we got at a salvage place, uh, Madison Street Salvage. Had them shipped down from, I think, Indiana. It's called Tennessee Pink Marble, but unlike traditional like Carrera Marble, it, it, it's not as porous. So over time, when it was newly uh, cut, it would have been closer to this beautiful, dark, rich color. But over time, because it's a home surface, it gets this kind of just hazy, almost gray color, and we want the beautiful pink color in our bathroom. So you can take just mineral oil, and it is great. And rub it in. Ooh. And that is going to it'll soak in and it's going to leave the color what we want it to be. You do this a lot with soapstone, you can do it with slate. Uh, and it just revitalizes the finish and the color. You have to do it about once every year. the room that after we bought the house we walked into this room and I fell through the floor fell right through the floor right there. Are good floors but those were obviously rotten to the <laughs> floor. so we knew we we're gonna have to replace the floor in this room and then we had the brilliant idea let's make this the main bathroom in yes the house. and the brilliant idea let's do the whole thing before, before we, we do, do anything else. else exactly and the room I'm standing in is not structurally sound you see that hole right over there? Hang on, I'm a coming. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get rid of all the dry rot that you possibly can, then come back with a wood hardener product. We wanna apply the wood hardener very liberally. This is not a product that you wanna use sparingly. And uh, so we did, it wasn't easy. No, we but, started out uh, by ripping up the rotten floor and putting in all new joists. All new joists. New piers. New piers, new subfloor. We had our plumbing roughed in and actually made a couple of changes to the yeah. plumbing. Yeah. We had our toilet over there and we moved it over there. Had a little water issue because the water was on and we didn't know it. Over here. Yeah. Note to viewer, if the water company sends you a bill on a house that you haven't gotten a water bill for in the past, you should probably mention that to people who might be cutting through water lines at your house. Yeah, just make that note. Just maybe make sure <laughs> it's turned off to that. So that It'll was be okay. that was the first the, the the construction, the big major foundation structural changes were first. We we're putting a bathroom above this bathroom, so we actually had to put a load-bearing wall right here, 
down to the piers. So uh, there's a lot of structure a lot of before structure. we could get started in the pretty. Right, we had, to, we had a lot of getting started before we could get started. So we've got the wall framed up. These are just to catch the drywall that's gonna go in the other bathroom. Not enough. Mm -mm. Measure once, cut three times. That's what I always say. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I didn't say a single word, not a word. I said a hammer. Here. Hammer. Okay. Hammer. But then we had the inspiration. If you haven't seen the bathhouse row video, you should go watch it because that inspired us yes. with their beautiful tile work. I mean, those places are just so gorgeous. Oh man. And healing and- Just very calming. They feel very serene. They were intended to be spas and people with uh, ailments would come from around the world yeah. to visit Hot Springs, Arkansas in the 1920s. And earlier. And earlier. <laughs> so we took that, we took one of those beautiful bathhouses as our inspiration for this space and just started building from there. We copied the mosaic floor tile from the receiving room on the third floor of the Fordyce bathhouse in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Beautiful space. And let that be the inspiration for the rest of the room. Had this incredible apothecary cabinet, which we had to basically rebuild and restain <laughs> because it wasn't quite what we thought that it was. Come down just a little bit. <laughs> Lane already had this apothecary cabinet, so she had the brilliant idea to use it as the main focal point of the bathroom. And so it was very beautiful. We brought it here. It's got this gorgeous trim, but then this side had nothing. This was actually originally a part of three apothecary cabinets. We know because this one said number three on the end of it. But we needed to match the molding here and here to the other end. So Papa Restoration actually made us, handmade us this piece and this piece. And I installed and Lane stained. And it looks like it was always here. So we're thrilled with how this came out. One of the things I love about this space and one of the things it shows is that practical things can also be beautiful things. Practical storage doesn't have to be unattractive. We don't have to hide it away. We don't have to put it in closets. We don't have to do built-ins. And this apothecary cabinet is a wonderful example of that. So these are things that we will use on a daily basis. These are our actual medications. They're labeled on the back before anybody asks. No, there is no law that says you have to leave medications in its original packaging. That's only if you're flying and only if it's prescriptions. And we're adults, so we know which one of these medications is for what thing. So I can reach up here. It's far enough out of the reach of little tiny fingers that nobody can climb up here. It's seven feet up in the air, but it looks lovely. This is where I keep all of my manicure items. So this is cotton balls. This is my actual fingernail polish. That's my cuticle set. All of these gorgeous apothecary bottles. Down here, I've got my gauze, band-aids, Q-tips, and in this container are all of the medications that we would need on a regular basis. Neosporin, uh, Pepto-Bismol, which is pink, not green, by the way. If you get that joke, you've been here a while. Any of the rest of the medications that we use, they're right in there. They're easily, easily reachable. And then a lot of the rest of this are things that make this bathroom comfortable. Bath salts, extra shampoo to refill at the bathtub. We've got storage for your paper towels, your toilet paper, your towels, your washcloths. It's all right here, easily within reach. One of the things that we put on this apothecary cabinet that I love that ties into the history of this home are the books. The owner of this home, his grandfather, was the first doctor here in Drew County, Arkansas. And these are all his medical books. And just because I thought it was funny, I had to put the one for intestinal ills in the bathroom. But that, you know, we do read in the bathroom. And in this bathroom, we read medical texts.
One of the things my mother taught me early on, a great designer herself, is that a room doesn't come to life until there's something living in it. So one of my favorite ways to add life to a room is with plants. And in this apothecary space, we thought terrariums and apothecary bottles was one of the most whimsical ways we could add a little bit of extra life to this space. We had all this beautiful original trim that we of course saved because we rehabilitate, restore and preserve houses. We do not remodel them, but it all had to be taken out. It had to be hand refinished basically. I am attempting to save the historic finish on the worst piece of trim in this entire house. The finishes on all the wood in this house are shellac, which are fantastic because they're made of two ingredients, denatured alcohol and macerated bug bits. So to re-liquefy the finish, all I have to do is add more denatured, denatured alcohol and scrub it with super fine steel wool. And it takes that finish that has alligatored and really aged over time and allows me to rework the finish on this piece of wood. I'm not gonna lie, these doors, the doorknobs and the back plates are probably one of the things I am the most proud of in this space. As we've said, we will always keep the original materials in a home, but the original materials in a home don't always look beautiful the first time you see them. These doors were filthy, they were scarred from 130 years of use and abuse, they were dry, the shellac on them was alligatored and unattractive. So these doors and all the trim have been restored by reliquifying the shellac, by touching up the faux bois using tiny little paint brushes and period appropriate stains in shellac. We have made these doors look almost as good as they did when they were brand new. The doorknobs are actually dated August of 1893. So we know they're very contemporary to the home but they had blackened with age. We could tell that they were originally plated in gold because there was some left, but not a ton. And several of the door plates or doorknobs were missing. I was able to source doorknobs and plates and then use that magic substance we call rub and buff to recreate the gold plate. And now they look as good as they did when they were new. And put a tiny dollop on a soft rag, a little bit goes an incredibly long way. And apply it to your hardware. One last step. Now that our rub and buff has dried, obviously this material is not a plating, so it's not meant to be handled every day. So we don't want to get this on here and have our great metal tone agreement and then this rubs off really quickly. So we're going to get just a can of spray lacquer. Once it's dry, we're going to hit all those areas that the hand is going to touch. We'll let that dry and that'll hold up for years to come until we can afford to have these replated. As you know, the trim in this house is gorgeous. It's one of the reasons we purchased the house in the first place and we wanted to continue using this trim in the bathroom. But we had to put up drywall and put up some insulation behind this wall. So we took all of the trim off as carefully as we could, and then we put it back. But when we put it back, we actually created a little gap between on the trim of the doors, the trim of the windows. So we had to put a piece here and stain it to match. But it came out great. Uh, we also used the piece here that was on the top of the uh, baseboards as our molding for our cabinet. Yeah, in a, in, a, in a wet space, you don't really want to have a wooden baseboard if you can avoid it. But we have this beautiful molding, and obviously, we don't throw anything away. So, we That's reused original. it. So, we reused it. Reduce, reuse, recycle, right? That gorgeous trim. Then we had the window that we had to rebuild. Not once, but twice. <laughs> The infamous window. The window 
window that will never be forgotten. This is the window that was broken, and so we took it out, Kevin took it out, carefully disassembled it, and I spent several weeks rebuilding this original window. What you have to remember about historic windows is that in these old homes, the windows were built on site most commonly, most frequently, and they were built for each individual window frame. So you wanna keep your original sashes as often as you can. So I just rebuilt this bottom rail, rebuilt the rabbit in the areas it was missing, replaced the glass, and now we have our beautiful historic window in place with its original pulley and weight system. Hopefully it'll be here for another 120 years. I hate a built-in vanity. I hate them. It's a personal preference if you have one. No offense, please don't send me hate mail. They're just not for me. I love a freestanding pedestal sink or wall mount sink, which this is. Pink Tennessee marble wall mount sink. I love it with its original porcelain bowl. We got these from a salvage place in Indiana. They were $75. With shipping down to Arkansas, they were $150 a piece. Real marble. Stunning, but you have to have somewhere to put your toothpaste and your toothbrushes and all the stuff that you need next to your sink, your hair dryer, your curling iron. We found this small apothecary that is perfectly in theme with the rest of the room and it serves for sitting storage, containing storage, so that we can keep the look of this open vanity area that I really, really wanted so that we don't cover up a lot of our flooring, so that we keep our space feeling very open. And again, so we don't have a fitted space which would be totally inappropriate for a house of this era. Now, at the same antique store, you found the main light for this room. Yes, I did. That is beautiful. It works in perfectly in here. And you paid... $75. I like the way you sneaked well, in. Sneak in. I sneaked in. I sneaked <laughs> That's in. That's actually the right word. <laughs> oh, it, it is. It is, yeah. Uh, but that light is perfect in here. It's beautiful. And then we found new wall sconces that don't map, but they coordinate wonderfully with this space. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's something that you'll very rarely see in a bathroom design of mine, a toilet. <laughs> because typically I put a toilet in a potty closet or at least behind a wall. I don't love a toilet sitting in the middle of a space. It tends to really, really hurt the aesthetic of your space when you have a commode in the center of it. But this is a house from 1897. So it wouldn't have had a potty closet. This was the potty closet. It was the reason for the bathroom. We decided to go with the most aesthetically pleasing toilet that we could find and one that's period appropriate, a wall mount tank toilet. And I actually love it. I kind of think it looks like a little piece of artwork in here, so I don't mind it at all in the space. Funny story, you'll all remember this space started out with the commode being on the other side, but once we got in here and really started working with the design of the space, trying to figure out really how it was gonna flow and how it was gonna function, we decided we needed to move it to the other side of the room. This is the toilet. That the plumbing stack was cut through and the water supply lines were cut, which then caused the great interior flood of 2021. I think the most important thing that we can stress here is that the ethos that we have when approaching a modern use space in a historic home, and that is it needs to feel like it fits the period of the home. So when you walk into the space, you have finishes, you have fixtures that all look like they could have been part of this home for the 130 years of its life. And then when you can, we will use pieces from that time period. Exactly, we, you don't, to me, when you are designing a space for a home of this era, the last thing you wanna do is come in and do a totally modern remodel of this space. 
because what's going to happen with that is that in just a couple of years, it's going to look out of date. So we use subway tiles, which are always going to be in style. Our mosaic tile will always be in style. We use, we come in and we use period appropriate pieces in a modern application. And that allows the space to function like a 21st century space, comfort, ease, elegance, but it will still be in style and appropriate to the house in another 100 years. Our goal is always, 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 if the original owners of this home came in and they looked around, they would say, what? That's my dream bathroom. That's exactly <laughs> what I wanted to put in 100 years ago. Exactly. I'm gonna come check on it in 100 years and yes. see if it's still works. I bet it is. I bet it does. I'll be back. I'm really, really thrilled with how this turned out for this home. Absolutely. It's unbelievable and it was hard work. It was hard. But we got to the finish line and I'm so happy with the results, aren't Me you? Too. Yes.